Okay, so I want to run through with you uh, the uh, highway capacity manual method for analyzing level of service at signalized intersections. Okay, we'll do a simple example. Uh, we'll go through some of the big ideas. So there's some definitions that we need to talk about. First of all, uh, lane groups. So that's the unit of analysis. When we're looking at a signalized intersection, we break out not just the each approach, we actually break out lanes that are similar in nature uh, on each approach. So for example, all of the left turn lanes on a, on a given approach are in one lane group. All of the shared lanes are in one lane group. Okay? And all of the right turn lanes are in one lane group. Okay? So we, we treat them separately. Uh, saturation flow we've talked about. This is the maximum possible uh, flow in a, in a given lane or lane group, okay? And it, that is in vehicles per hour of green. So it's the maximum flow due to geometrics and uh, traffic and that kind of thing, right? Without regard to green time. We, we assume there's 100% green time with saturation flow. And there's some adjustments that we'll make to the saturation flow based on uh, the, the makeup of the traffic and the geometry and so forth. So let's go through this highway capacity manual procedure. The big idea is that well, all we're looking for is level of service. That's the, that's the main thing. And we can find that from average delay. And we talked about delays uh, when we talked about queuing, right? So I'm going to actually review that for you uh, and show you where that delay equation comes from in the highway capacity manual. It's derived from uniform Q model. So we're assuming a uniform delay, not a probabilistic delay. Okay, so here's the arrival and departure curve for a signalized intersection for one cycle. The arrival rate is V, and the departure curve is, is here. So that during red, no one's moving, and then at, after, after it turns green, there's a saturation flow until we reach re equilibrium during the cycle. Okay, the red area, of course, remember, gives the, uh, the total delay, uh, and um, we'll, di we'll divide that red area by the, uh, the number, total number of vehicles arriving during a cycle. Okay, and that, that value is the slope of the line times the run cycle, right? So VC, little VC. Uh, but to find this area, we need to scope out some things. Uh, first of all, define a couple of dimensions here, X and H. Uh, the red area is one half the base, which is R times H. And one half the base times the height. Now we need to find the height. The height is either um, uh, V, the slope, times R plus X, right? or it's also S, the slope, times X, right? It's in both of those. And they meet at this point. And so we can find a relationship for H in that way, okay? Uh, and um, so the area is uh, z uh, one half the base times this height. And if I divide the area, the area, by um, the total number of vehicles arriving, VC, I come up with a delay equation. Okay. And actually, uh, here we go. So here it is. And on the next page here, we're going to simplify that, and you'll see at the end of the day where we, uh, where I'm heading. So the first thing we need to do is simplify this little piece right here. <coughs> 1, 1 plus V over uh, S minus V, blah, blah, blah. If I go through that, um, and you can do the math, it's algebra, um, I can come up with a, an equation that includes things of which, in which I have interest. There are things that I, I, have, I commonly use for uh, the analyses. Okay, G over C and X is the V over C ratio. V over little c. So if I plug this in, and I plug in C minus G for, for the red, uh, I come out with this equation, which is the delay equation that's used by the high, highway capacity manual. 
Okay, so I just wanted to show you that this, this equation here has some basis in what we've talked about before. So this is the delay equation, but of course we know the uh, vehicles are, do not arrive uniformly, so there's an adjustment uh, factor in here for that. And if you'll notice, the only things that we don't know uh, are the capacity numbers, right? We know the volume, volume to capacity ratio. We know the volume, we don't know the capacity, and we don't know the capacity down here. So that's the thing we're going to be looking for. Right? So we're going to, number one, we'll adjust volumes with a peak hour factor, just like we did with uh, freeways. So the volume divided by the peak hour factor gives us the, the worst case scenario. We identify lane groups, use page 293. There's a very nice little table there that shows you how to do that. Basically, we're just breaking out lanes according to their, their uh, use. Uh, and then we'll calculate delay. And that requires an estimate for capacity. So the capacity is equal to saturation flow times green to cycle length ratio. That gives us the delay values, which gives us level of service. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So now, to find capacity, we need saturation flow. Right. So um, you may remember that uh, the saturation flow ideal is about 1,900 vehicles per lane per hour of green. And we're going to adjust, make all these adjustments to that ideal value uh, so that, that we can get a, a pretty good handle on what the actual maximum flow rate is for this given condition. So this is the number of lanes. The width of the lane makes a difference. The number of heavy vehicles in the mix, the grade, uh, parking, um, you know, buses, right and left turns out of the lane group makes a difference. And, um, you know, if there's more than one lane, well, you know, it may not be evenly distributed. So if you have a heavier use in one lane, you need to, to account for that. Okay. And uh, that's basically it. So the capacity then is just this adjusted saturation flow for my lane group times G over C. Okay. So the procedure calls for me to determine some adjustments, calculate the saturation flow, the capacity X, which is V over C, uh, and then we're going to talk about this delay adjustment factor, uh, but then we can calculate a delay. So there's some right turn factors in your book based on the percent right turns. Um, left turn factors, protected, uh, protected phasing is pretty easy, but the permitted phasing is a little tricky. Permitted phasing means everybody gets the green ball and you can make a left turn if you're, if you're brave. Okay. So there are two really general situations that apply here. So I'm sitting here and the light turns green. What will I do? Well, I'm going to sit there and wait until that opposing flow dissipates. Right? So even though the light is green, I can't move. So I'm not using all of the green that's provided to me in my phase. Right? So I'm, I'm, I'm using um, a portion of it, right? The, the total green minus this green, this, this time to clear the queue. Now there's another situation, maybe I'm not at, I'm at the head vehicle, but I'm not at the intersection when it turns green for left turns, okay? In which case, um, I won't use all of the green because I'm not there yet. I'll only use the amount of green that's left once I get there. So that's another reduction, right? Okay, so per, for permitted left turns, we use this, this, um, this reduced value for uh, green time for my movement based on the total green time that's provided physically minus either one of these that's, that's the worst case. Okay. Okay. And that's, that's how permitted left turns are done. Very complicated procedure. We do not want to do this by hand. And then there are pedestrian factors based on number of turning vehicles and all the rest. Okay, there are some equations in the book for that as well. Not as complicated. Uh, and then, then once we've done that, we can uh, we can calculate delay. Now I show this equation. This is the more general equation. Uh, we're not looking at this. I just wanted to show it to you to know that when you see it, oh wait, what's that? I didn't want it to be a surprise. 
if we make some simplifying assumptions like 15 minute intervals for the volume study and pre-time signal, we come out with an equation that looks like this. The familiar one we just uh, showed before. So we've now, we could calculate, I've shown you how we can calculate uh, capacity, we're good to go. The last thing though is uh, we need to uh, adjust for this thing called a platoon factor. Uh, and we talked a little bit about this in class. Arrival type has to do with the kind of arrivals that are at your, at your location. So the worst possible thing that could happen is I have a tightly packed platoon of vehicles arriving right at the beginning of red. It's the worst. The best is I have that same platoon arriving right at the beginning of green, right? Well, there's a, a, a range of, of situations in the middle, and there are actually six of them that are considered, and uh, you can go into this table and get a, a factor that will adjust for that, okay? And this, this arrival type comes from, um, if we do a, a, a field study, we can actually collect data on how many vehicles arriving arrive on green. That gives us an indication of this arrival type. And once we're done, we can then um, uh, take the weighted average of all of our individual uh, lane group delays and get a total approach delay and same thing for the intersection. So I'm going to follow this up in a different video with uh, a class example for highway capacity software.